hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, it's Show Updates Part 1. Well, for those of you who have been around for a while, you know exactly what's happening. For those of you that are new to the channel within the last six months, I'll let you know what the deal is. And what it is, is that every six months, I go through all my old show episodes and I pull out shows and episodes and bits and pieces where I think that there has been an update or where there has been an update and I bring those updates to you. Sometimes when you watch a show on YouTube, you look at it and you say, does that guy still like the jig? I mean, he posted it two years ago. Does that guy still like that tool, that project that he made? Does it still work out like that? Is it, did it have any longevity? Did it fall apart? And that's what today's show is all about. Updating you for the previous shows and, you know, giving you the information that other channels usually lack to give you. <laughs> anyway, guys, without further ado, let's get into the updates. So back in February of 2020, like over three years ago, I brought you this bad boy. And what this is, is I showed you how to take a paint pot and convert it into a pressure pot for casting your resins. And guys, I still use this to this day and I still love it. It is absolutely incredible. Um, what it does is you place your castings in there or your resin pours inside, you lock it all down and then you put pressured air into this thing and bring the pressure inside up to about 45, 46 PSI. Um, and that pressure compresses and, and crushes all of the air bubbles that are in the resin and it gives you a much more clear pour. It comes out with no air bubbles, very clear. Um, it's just amazing. And if you haven't made one of these yet, but you've been kind of sitting on the fence and wondering, you know, geez, you know what, you see these guys make them online, how do they work? This thing has worked amazing since day one and it continues to work amazing. Now, if you don't believe me, let me just show you the difference here. I have three silicone uh, mixing containers and I used these recently for a project and this was the leftovers of the little mini pours that I did. One out of the three was put in here during the curing time. So let me just show you the difference between no pressure pot and a pressure pot. Well, I'm not sure how well the camera is going to show it, but here we have one of the resin pours that was not done in the pot. And you can see all the bubbles in this. Now let's take another one here. This one here, I used a different hardener, so it's a little more yellowy, but yet we can still see just unreal amount of bubbles in that where it was just left to dry on its own. But let me show you the one that I did in the pressure pot. Guys, perfectly clear. No bubbles at all. Um, it just looks great. It's a very clear pour and I know it's difficult to see through this silicone uh, mixing container, but there is no bubbles at all. You can definitely see the difference between this one with no bubbles or this one that is loaded with them. So guys, pressure pot makes a great big difference when it comes to your resin pours. And honestly, the one that I made on the show has served me well for three years and continues to do so. Well, in May of 2015, I brought you this, which was the wind spinner. And it actually made one of the last update shows saying that this thing is still kicking after almost eight years. Well, I'm sad to say that this year, uh, on its eighth year, as I pulled it out, I realized after inspecting it that this thing is in worse shape than I ever thought it was. It did great up onto them, but after the winter, it really didn't survive. So eight years is still a pretty good run for a project that was made out of hardboard and some threaded rod, but it did finally give it up. So those of you that decided you wanted to make one and were hoping for all this longevity, guys, don't get too excited because, well, 
you're only going to get eight years out of it. <laughs> so, you know, that's not too bad. I think eight years is a pretty good run. I think I'm going to have to make another one. Well, also eight years ago, I believe it was April of 2015, I brought you a show on how to make your own set of cold jaws for your lathe. And guys, these things have been phenomenal. Um, they are still functioning perfectly like the day they were made. You know what? I just used my set today, so it's still set up over there. Let's head over to the lathe and have a look. So for those of you who don't know, this is a set of cold jaws and it connects to an existing four jaw chuck that you would have for your lathe. It's made out of regular shop material. These are just rubber feet that you can get from your big box store and some half inch thick ply. Guys, it uses all the existing hardware for your four jaw chuck. And if you don't know what it's for, when you turn a bowl, the bowl is like this on your lathe, usually on a face plate in this case for me. And once I was done, I separated the face plate and then you get the rough bottom, but you want to finish it. Well, how do you mount this back on the lathe to finish it? Well, you sit it in your cold jaws and you basically spin this just like that there. And the rubber feet, hold it securely in place. And then you can just turn as normal. You can turn and finish the bottom of your bowl, give it a nice finish, round it off, flatten it off, clean it up, sand it, whatever you wanna do, but it's a great way to finish up the bottoms of your bowl turning projects. Now guys, this is not meant for high RPM, so you wanna turn it down while you're using it because you gotta remember, it's still just plywood. And if you have a bigger bowl, well then you just move your rubber feet out to these outer rings to accommodate a larger bowl and to accommodate a smaller bowl. And when you're finished, of course, you can just loosen this off and your bowl comes out. No marks from the rubber on it. You are able to finish it off. But guys, this is fantastic. If you haven't made one yet and you're a guy that works on the lathe from time to time, what are you waiting for? Well, back at the end of March of this year, 2023, I brought you guys the show on how to make scroll saw seashells. Now, I got that idea from an old scroll saw magazine, probably 10 or 12 years old, and the magazine is no longer in publication. Um, the guy that did the scroll saw seashells in that magazine, there was no contact information there for him or anything like that. You guys know that I try to give credit where credit is due, but in this case, there was nowhere to give credit to. So I did the show. You guys enjoyed it. You had a good time with it. And a while later, not very long after that, a guy contacted me uh, through Facebook and said, hey, you know what? It's nice that you did those shells, but if you're going to take somebody else's idea, the least you could have done was link it to me. And I thought, who the heck is this guy? I didn't know who he was. So I told him, well, listen, buddy, like, you know, I got this from a magazine that is no longer in publication. This is an old magazine, like, you know, and after I posted that message, I got to thinking, why would somebody, why would they come to me and say, hey, that's my idea, if it wasn't? So I thought, I'm gonna go out and look at that magazine and check and color me shocked. Sure enough, <laughs> wasn't it this guy that actually designed it? So in a way, I'm flattered that he saw my project and liked what I did. And uh, as soon as I did that, I wrote him right back and his name is Steve Garrison. And anyway, I wrote him a message. I apologized. I said, you know, I didn't know who to give credit to. I do apologize. I will most certainly fix that immediately. And immediately I did. I went on the show's description. I put his contact information there. Uh, he provided me with some links. So I put them there in the video so that full disclosure, it's not my design, it's not my idea. I learned from somebody else and unbeknownst to me, I learned from this guy, Steve Garrison, who was now contacting me to say, hey, that's my stuff. So 
It was nice to hear from him, but I just want to give credit where credit is due. I didn't want to leave it hanging like that. Um, him and I did have a great conversation over the next little while. He's a very nice guy, very understanding. Uh, you know, I, I believe he's somewhere in the States, uh, whereas I am here in Canada. But a very nice guy, very understanding. I'm going to post the links down below to his stuff yet again, even though it's in the scroll saw uh, shell video. But I'm going to post it down below. If you guys are interested in his work, because I'm telling you, you should check out his Facebook page. He does some beautiful stuff with shells and wood, uh, some beautiful shapes. He sells the patterns for them. If you guys are interested in that sort of thing, check out the links below and check out Steve Garrison's stuff because it really is pretty spectacular. It puts my stuff to shame. So check his stuff out. Steve, I apologize once again. Um, again, I give credit where credit is due and in this case, the credit belongs to Steve. Well, back in February of this year, 2023, I brought you guys how to add LED lighting to your X-Tool portable enclosure for the uh, X-Tool D1 Pro 20 watt laser engraver. And at the time, I was a little apprehensive because I wasn't sure how those LEDs were going to stick over the long haul because I was actually sticking it to material like cloth. Normally these LEDs, you can clean the smooth surface with some rubbing alcohol and that adhesive really sticks them on there. I mean, really, really well. They'll pull the paint off the wall uh, if you, you know, let them cure on there. But I was very apprehensive about how they would go into this cloth covered um, enclosure for the laser. Well, let's head over to the bench and uh, I'll show you how it did. And you know what? I'm pretty pleased with it. Well, here we have the lid of our enclosure and this is where the lights got mounted. And guys, this is the way it's been since February. I don't keep this set up in the shop. I don't have the room for it. So this constantly gets folded up and, and unfolded and folded and unfolded. So it sees a bit of abuse. But honest to goodness, these LEDs are still stuck down rock solid all the way around, even though this is on material. I'm very surprised about that. Even the controller, which has a little bit of weight to it, especially with the cord tie wrapped like this, um, it has a bit of weight to it, so that's extra pull on gravity as this thing is set up to separate these from your enclosure. But that adhesive has really held on there well, and even though I was apprehensive about it and kind of worried about it, I guess I really had nothing to worry about. Um, I've actually done this. I have two of these enclosures. As you guys know, X-Tool uh, sent me one at first that the magnets were reverse polarity, and so they sent me a replacement, an entire new enclosure, which was really good of them, and then I was able to cut the other one apart where the magnets are, reverse the polarity, and have a second working enclosure. So the one enclosure is in the house and the one lives out here in the shop, but I have added the LEDs like this to both, and I can tell you for 100% certain that the adhesive is perfect and that not just on this enclosure, but on the one that's inside the house as well. The LEDs have stuck true. It has been uh, about six months so far. And honestly, if they have stuck through for six months and they're still holding tight onto the enclosure, um, I really can't see them letting loose at this point in time. But if they do, of course, you're gonna see it here on the next update show. But for now, the update is, uh, it's bang on and that is perfect. And you know what, those LEDs really do help you a lot to, to light up your work and to see what's going on with your laser engravings. And unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for this week on the show. Um, guys, these update shows, especially today's, are a little bit on the shorter side, but that's because there's really been no changes and nothing really to explain. Um, not to worry though, if you're looking for more updates, we're going to do it again next Tuesday with part two of this little mini series, just like I always do. Two parts of updates, five per day, and you can look for that on the coming Tuesday show. Guys, all of the updates today, while they may seem like no big deal, they are important to somebody. If somebody was looking at, say, those lights for the enclosure saying, geez, man, that's not going to stick, that's just going to fall off. 
and then he sees this update, now he knows that's not going to happen. If they're wondering about the pressure pot, well now you know, this thing has been rock solid for years. The cold jaws. These updates, while they may not be important to some, they're imperative to others. So it's important as a YouTube, uh, I don't know what you call it, a YouTube instructor, a YouTube video guy, whatever, a YouTuber, you know, it's important as that you have a responsibility to your audience to not just put out that video, but if something important changes or if something important has longevity, you have a responsibility to bring that to your viewers so that they know what to expect with their projects. And if it does fail, there's no shame in that. Bring it to the show and say that it failed so that people in the future that want to make that project can see the update and say, geez, man, that failed. How can I improve on that? So what it does is it gets them thinking and gets those wheels turning and then they come up with a new method. You see what I'm saying here? So even though it screwed up or it didn't work or it had no longevity, by saying that and bringing it to the audience, it gets them thinking how they can improve it. And as soon as you do that, as soon as you get another person thinking about a method or thinking about a way to do something, you're suddenly teaching. Even if you made a mistake, you're teaching through your mistakes. And that's what it's all about, guys. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not gonna miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. Guys, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the updates today. I hope you're gonna, you know, pay attention to them and take them to heart and, you know, maybe learn something from my mistakes. And more importantly, guys, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.